guys how's it going um back again um this past weekend uh the lady and myself went up to duluth again um which i will never complain about because i'm really starting to like duluth um lots of cool stuff lots of cool people you know um we went up there for uh the last show of one of my favorite bands and and in the in the opinion of a lot of people uh one of the best bands to come out of the cities uh of course our friends trida um they were playing their last show up there so of course we had to go i mean it was just of course um so we went up there uh the show was friday night it was good we'll, we'll keep that part of it kind of quick um so it was uh, Prairie Fire opening, which I've seen before. Actually, all the bands I've seen before. Um, Prairie Fire opening, and then Airship Caravan, Caravan and then uh, Trident closing up the night. And um, yeah, it was cool. So let's just get into it. Um, Prairie Fire started us off, and, and they were just awesome. Check it out. The new one, we played this at Fokker Fest. Which had about as many people there as when we played with Trida the first time in a warehouse in Superior. <laughs> so fucking <it>, nobody. <laughs> Fun story about that warehouse show to nobody. When uh, Trida started playing Soul of Sea, which if you guys don't play that song, you don't get to get off stage. Just so you know. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I, as soon as they started playing that, I started watching too hard and I gave Brady a bloody nose. And then we had to play. <laughs> <laughs>
So, yeah. And, let's see. There we go. Um, and finally got a t-shirt from them, which is cool. Got two of them, actually. So Tara took the other one. Um, so, there you are. Very cool. Um, and so, yeah. Um, I don't know if they said... I mean, I would assume they would have something something coming out re relatively soon, but I don't know for sure. So keep an eye out, keep an eye out. Um, next up was Airship Caravan. Um, and we tried to get more merch from them, but they're they're uh, running low and trying to get rid of the stuff they have because uh, they said they had a new, or should have a new album ready for release uh, this fall, September, November, somewhere in there. Um, so that'll be cool. Uh, check them out. Yeah, a round of applause for Prairie Fire before us. So, yeah. Y'all ready for Shrina?
So yeah, so um, they're always fun. I mean, all these bands are always fun, but they 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 they're just they're just fun. They're just a good band. Um, you should really check them out. I mean, check out all these guys. But and finally, Trida, um, and they had um, set lists um, available. Um, so of course, I we got a couple and had to have them signed. So there's let's see, there's. Jason and Mike and Taylor and then John the drummer from Prairie Fire did a little Prairie Fire logo for us um, So yeah, that's it. That is our last show um, And Looking at like Since the release of, of this album, which I'm not still not sure how to pronounce um, And all the times I've seen them. I don't think I've heard them do uh, the Isolationist, which is the opening track in its entirety. Like they'll start, if, if you're familiar with it, they'll start with it, but then as soon as it kind of kicks in, they'll go into the the next song. So I don't know if I've, I've ever seen them do it in its entirety. They did Friday night, and it was awesome. Um, and the other thing... And the song I captured, because because having the set list, I because I usually do like third song in the night, and um, well, second or third depending. Um, so I've gotten a lot in these reviews. I've gotten a lot of the same uh, try to songs, um, but once I saw that they were doing um, "Bluer Sky," which is one of my faves, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get that one. Um, and I believe the last time I I saw them play uh, Blue Sky was uh, February 2020 at 331, which is the same night I interviewed Jason in their van. Um, and I think that's the last time they played it, at least as I can remember. But please, please check it out.
so yeah i mean and and as taylor said i mean it's 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 you know kind of a sad song it's about someone you know not not loving you back or or whatever he said um but yeah it, it's it's still one of my favorites it, it just is um and um they of course being their last show they were just trying to to get rid of their merch so, so they had a you know pay what you want and all the proceeds were going to uh, what organization abortion now i don't remember what exactly or organization but it was a pro pro abortion organization um so i was completely down with that and i think we both gave them like 20 bucks or something um and i just picked up um one of these in like a small i think that's small and my plan is to uh cut out the, the design and put it on a jacket back patch um so i will do that at some point um so yeah that was that was friday night and um again there was just a good feeling there um it was at this place called the caddy shack uh because blush the place we saw him first time we went up there to see him um unfortunately it's closed um which everybody's kind of bummed about which which is understandable because again just like in the cities we're losing venues left and right it, it seems like um so yeah it, it got moved out of caddyshack which which it was actually kind of a cool setup i mean a low stage but a really sizable stage actually um and, our, and an actual pa and lights and all that um sound was actually really good i was kind of impressed with that um food is okay um you know it, it was what it was um but the staff seemed really nice um and just the atmosphere of it was was really cool um and actually i mean it being tried as last show i i and and i've been you know and and i mean afterwards when i was talking to them it was like you know i just thanked them for for allowing me to be you know part of for the last like five years or four years or whatever of this journey that they've been on um just because it was so yeah i i it was an emotional night i'm, I'm not gonna lie um you know it, it, it was what it was but but we will all live on and and if you haven't gotten either of their their releases yet you should you should get them now you should get them immediately i don't know where you would get them i don't know if their band camp is still operational um you may be able to find them maybe at cheapo i'm not sure um but but yeah definitely definitely look out for them Um, and get them both because they're both awesome. Um, so that was Friday. So Saturday, um, we got up and last time we were up there, we stumbled upon this antique store, which I think is called, um, Father Time, I think, don't quote me on that, but it's like right on, on Superior, um, I think it's right in Superior. Um, and last time we were there, we, we stumbled upon this place, got in there for about 10 minutes or so, and they closed. They were closing. So so we said, yeah, next time we go back, we're definitely going to go back there. And we did, and spent about three hours there. Because um, there's just so much. Oh, my God, there's so much stuff and so much to look at and so much cool stuff. Um for example, I mean, Satera, uh, Satera picked up a good, a good stack of vinyls. Um, most of them, I'm sure, being like original, like vintage original. Um, what else did we pick up? Oh, we first went by the books and looked at the at the cookbooks, and she asked if I had any cookbooks at home, and I'm like, well. We used to. I used to have a. We used to collectively had me and my ex a crap load of cookbooks. Um, and she's like, "You need some cookbooks." So we got some cookbooks. So we got this one, good, the bad, and the hungry, um, which is a lot of uh, 
celebrity uh, recipes, which is always fun, always interesting. Um, I mean, you have, you know, Ed Asner's favorite potato recipe. You know, can't argue with that. Um, and then we got some more classic. I mean, you know, you got the joy of cooking. And not like I'm, I'm completely hopeless in the kitchen. I kind of know what I'm doing. Uh, Ten years of, of Food Network will do that. But, you know, new ideas are always good. Um, we also got... Home and Garden's new cookbook. And this one, I believe, this is the... Uh-huh. Yeah, so this one goes up to about 83. So we'll have some classics there. Um, and we have The Best of Bon Appetit, uh, which is from... 1978, I want to say, 79, somewhere in there. Uh, 79. So it'll be, it'll be fun and interesting to go, go back in time a little bit, you know? Kind of. Could that be there? Um, anyway, um, Oh, what else did we get? Tatera uh, got a bracelet, a really cool uh, bracelet. Um, oh yeah, if you're if you're in the market for uh, glassware, barware, especially vintage like beer glasses and stuff, that is the place. Um, but I did find these kind of neat. Um, pair of them. I had to get both tequila rose shot glasses. It's a little on the edge, so that was really cool. Um, and also, if any of you remember um, Shakey's Pizza or Pizza Hut or anywhere like that, they had a sleeve of these. Um, sleeve of six for like 10 bucks. Your good old fashioned red, like restaurant glasses. So those are really, really cool. Um, and I believe, yeah, I think that was it for for the antique store, um, which again, we spent about three hours at, which is kind of insane. Then um, we were kind of, uh, sitting in the parking lot, kind of deciding what to do next. And we stumbled upon um, the North Shore Scenic Railroad. Ra railroad. Um, and she had always wanted to do that. She had been, because they have a, a rail museum as well. Um, Yeah, this is just died to the actual museum right there. Um, and I'd never been, and she'd never been on the train, and I'd never been on a train. So we were like, okay, that'd be cool. And then we saw that they had what they called uh, uh, music and pizza. Damn it. Anyway, oh, which is what I did. Oh, just a little bit of it. There we go. Um, that's the actual ticket to get to the museum. Um, but we noticed they had a, a pizza and music uh, excursion. We'll, we'll call it that. And we're like, hey, that sounds pretty cool. Um, so it was, um, two and a half hours total there, round trip. Um, and you got a personal 
Domino's Pizza, because apparently Domino's dominates Duluth. Um, and uh, a soda, a free soda when you came in, uh, they had a cash bar there with, with uh, limited selection, but you know, you're on a train, so you can't have everything. Um, and then they had a, a guitar player and bass player kind of sitting, I felt kind of bad for them, um, in what was like the bar car. Uh, they were kind of like sitting in the corner um, and just kind of playing and, and doing their thing. Um, but they did, because they had a, a basically a PA system throughout the throughout the train for like announcements and, and whatnot. Um, and they basically piped it through that as well. So that was kind of cool. So wherever, whatever car you want, you could, you could hear it. Um, and it was an older couple and, and they did, you know, a lot of old rock and roll and blues and, and, you know, that kind of stuff, but it was still cool. Still very cool. Um, yeah. So that was Saturday. Um, And so then we got done and, and, you know, we were just like, you know, what do we want to do? And then, and then Satara suggested, bless her heart. She was like, do you just want to go back to the hotel and watch Food Network and, and I'll paint my nails? And I was like, absolutely. Um, so we went back and I think I was awake because by the time we got back, let's see, 6, 30, 7, 30, 8, 30. By the time we got back, it was like nine-ish, give or take. Um, and I think I was passed out by about 10.30. Um, so, yeah. Um, the next day, we get up. And it's like, okay, what am I going to do today? Um, and it was, um, there's... Um, but there's a mansion in, in Duluth, uh, called Glensheen, um, owned by the Co Cogden, Cogden family. Um, and they have tours there and that's something else that Terry had done before, but like years ago or something. And out of all the things we, we thought to do, cause they're, you know, we're talking about like an aquarium and what was the other thing we we're going to do? remember um but i was like yeah honestly out of those you know the the mansion tour sounds pretty freaking cool um so we did that and so we got map and then you should focus and of course we got the the full house tour. So we got all the levels and the basement. Um, and of course you can walk around the grounds and the grounds were huge and gorgeous and they have lake, ex lake access because they're right on Superior. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty freaking sweet. Um, yeah, it was just cool. And of course we had to stop by the gift shop. Um, There we go. And straighten it and are you going to focus? Anyway, you get the idea. So a little low chalk out, shot glass to add to the collection. And found a little book. Um, that should be interesting. Because um, if you've never been to Duluth, I think they probably have more breweries and 
and cideries and distilleries, you know, per per square whatever than anywhere else I've ever been to in my life. Um, and then cool bookmark, which is a rendering of the marble in the living room. Um, so yeah, so so I'll read up on the histories of the breweries and whatnot. Um, and then what else we got? Souvenir edition of that. Um, got like a local local paper. So that's fun. Um, that. Yeah, so that was, and then um, Sunday night on our way out, because um, we they, we spent a lot of time at, at the mansion. Again, that was probably three, three and a half, maybe four hours, um, but totally worth it. If you're up there, go to that, because it's, it's absolutely incredible. Um, so did that, and then... Um, on the way home, it's like, yeah, we should probably eat something because we didn't eat anything like all day. Um, and then we're like, okay. And then she was talking about this place that the, she had gone with, uh, gone to with her sister, um, that she thought was Fitzger's restaurant. Turned out not to be. Turned out to be the place next door, whose name I forget. Um, but we went to the fit, the, the Fitzgers, uh, brew house. Um, and that quality, quality food, um, and drinks too. I had a, I had a triple, triple jam, uh, cider, uh, which was quite good. Um, I forget the manufacturer of it. I want to say Dukes, but that's not right. Um. But yeah, it was it was a, a triple jam and it was it was really really good, um, and she had a couple of really really good beers and then all the food was really good too. Um, I got the uh, Reuben because uh, you can't or not the Reuben the Cuban. I don't like Reubens. Uh, the Cuban. Um, and if you're unfamiliar, that's uh, pulled pork, ham, Swiss cheese, I believe, um, pickle, um, and they did a. Um, Dijon mustard, lemon pepper, aioli, which is really quite good, um, on ciabatta bread, and then, they, then you squish it, and that was really, really good. Oh my god, um, with their beer battered fries, which are also excellent. And Sarah got the uh, salmon. I think it was the salmon wrap, um, which came with a a smoky sauce. So I mean. I'm sure it's more complicated than this, but it tasted just like a slightly spicy mayonnaise mixed with like liquid smoke. It was quite good um, on both the sandwich and the fries. Um, so yeah, another recommendation, Fitzgers, good, good stuff. Um, and then drove home and then that was it. And then in just about 30, six hours give or take um from now roughly um we'll be on our way into the the heart of wisconsin to go to rockfest um so yeah uh, that's all i got for now um so yeah i don't know what what kind of stuff i'll be doing for rockfest um we'll see um probably expect a, a fairly lengthy uh, video or maybe I'll break it up by day I'm not sure um, if I can organize it that well we'll see um, but yeah so so you know stick around keep posted um, all that fun stuff um, and for now as always just you know support all, all your locals no matter what they are uh, you know just be cool don't be a dick and um, See you later. See you next time.